Hello and thank you for tuning in to Sideline Story, your destination for sports news analysis and discussions. I'm your host, Brandon Yates, and I'm joined by my two fantastic co-hosts, Yang Guang and Tian Yu. And today we are going to review the sports year that was 2023. I think as the year has gone on, we've seen some incredible sporting moments. We've seen some sports news. We've seen some shock results. We've seen some memorable performances for good reasons and for bad reasons. And we'll dive into all of that very soon. But first up, China Media Group's Mike Fox is going to take us through the top 10 sporting moments from the year 2023, and we can listen to that now. Carbon neutrality was reached for the first time in the history of the Asian Games in Hangzhou and Para-Asian Games, which opened on September 23rd and October 22nd, respectively. Germany beat Serbia to win their first FIBA Basketball World Cup title in Manila on September 10th. Spain defeated England to claim their first FIFA Women's World Cup in Sydney on August 20th. Singapore held the inaugural Olympic Esports Week in June before the IOC launched the Esports Commission on September 6th. Lionel Messi won his eighth Ballon d'Or award in Paris on October 30th. Novak Djokovic won his record-tying 24th Grand Slam title at the US Open on September 10th. Kenya's Calvin Kiptum broke the world record to win the Chicago Marathon with a time of 2 hours and 35 seconds on October 8th. The IOC Executive Board approved five new sports for the 2028 Los Angeles Summer Olympics. They are cricket, flag football, lacrosse, squash as well as baseball and softball. Leon Marchand of France broke the men's 400 meter individual medley world record at the Fukuoka World Aquatics Championships on July 23rd. And Simone Biles won the women's individual all around title at the Artistic Gymnastics World Championships for the sixth time in Antwerp on October 6th. Okay, so Yang Guang, um, like I've already said, 2023, I think, was a pretty memorable year, but it's quite hard to pick some of the standouts. So what were some from your side? Um, When I look back at the sideline story episodes of this year, wow, uh, we covered so many sports events and topics, and we saw some great sporting achievements made across the globe. Man City's treble, um, the new NBA champions. (laughs) (laughs) I'm sorry. <laughs> um, Spain's Women's World Cup triumph. Um, but the biggest one to me is still the new men's marathon record created by Calvin Kipton at the Chicago Marathon Race. He refreshed um, the record previously held by Elliot Kipchok by 34 seconds with mm. his time of 2 hours and 35 seconds and became the first athlete to break into 2 minutes and 1 minute in an official marathon race. Here's wow. what he said after the fantastic race. I feel so happy. Uh, I was well prepared. I knew I was coming for a, a course record, but unfortunately, a world record. As I saw the time in front of me, I said, let me try. Maybe I can run under 200, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, I mean, this achievement is beyond um, just a 23-year-old breaking the world record. Yeah. This time length just enables human to imagine more. Um, where is the boundary of human in marathon? When can we witness the marathon record that is under two hours? Because Kipton was just um, 35 seconds shy of that threshold. Yeah. I would call it the biggest sports achievement this year. It doesn't sound like a lot, but in terms of for someone like me that, I mean, look, I don't run marathons, but I, do, I run like maybe a kilometer each day. <laughs> but 34 seconds in terms of running is, is pretty substantial. So to break a record by that amount of time, yeah. I think is, is mm, pretty yeah. darn impressive. Um, and uh, what stays behind this record time is the inspiring story of Kipton. Um, when he first participated in a major running competition, um, which is in 2018, he couldn't even afford his own shoes wow. and uh, had to borrow a pair um, to run. One year ago, um, he had never run a marathon race, and his marathon career also started differently. Um, Kipton had to start his career on the road because he lacked resources to access proper tracks, and that's why he chose to run marathon races. Um, his coach said what Kipton does every day is run, eat, and sleep. 
and of course,、um, he has the talent.、Uh, but what makes him is the hard work and the、uh, perseverance from tough conditions. Other prominent title-winning athletes in the biggest、uh, sporting events in the past year, most of them have been billionaires、uh, before those title runs. But Kipton just rose from a name seldom people, except track and field diehards, heard of,、um, into something making running history. I just love this story. Yeah, I mean, if you look back at his history,、um, you know, considering where he started from, it's pretty remarkable to think about the records that he's been able to achieve. But that being said, I think that look, I don't wish a difficult start for any person in their life, but it seems like a lot of athletes that go on, a lot of people. That go on to achieve incredible success seem to come from very、yeah. difficult circumstances in the、mm. beginning of their lives, and it seems like people that manage to get through that、mm. seem to somehow succeed. I think it, it's quite a, a tricky thing because it's kind of like a sink or swim situation. You know, people that have really tough starts in their lives either go on to achieve nothing or end up in prison or you know just have really difficult lives, or they use that difficult start to better themselves, and sometimes. They manage to maintain that strength of mind and strength of character、um, throughout their entire lives, and that can lead to some incredible success. And it sounds like in this particular story,、um, he was able to achieve that, which is、yeah. great.、Uh, Tianyu, from your side, any standout news stories、um, in particular that you that that come to mind? Yeah, there are indeed so many big events taking place in 2023.、Uh, but my personal pick of the biggest one would be the hosting of the Women's World Cup. And, you know,、mm. we've always been casting our eyes on the men's World Cup, but I think this edition of the women's World Cup is bigger has, than ever, right? Yeah, it's yeah. proved its success in in terms of the quality of the matches, as well as the attendance and viewership of the games. It is、uh, capturing the hearts and minds of football fans, not only the, in the two co-host countries, New Zealand and Australia, but across the globe. You know,、mm. over 1.7 million tickets were sold for the whole tournament. And the TV figures have also reached a record high. It seemed to boost、uh, domestic football around the world as well. I know in the UK, in the WSL,、mm. the Women's Soccer League, they've also just been breaking attendance records, breaking t- you know TV viewership、yeah. records,、um, and a lot of female footballers are becoming household names,、yeah. which I don't think we've ever seen before、mm. um, yeah. in history. So I think a lot of that has to do with the growth of women's sport, but also I think in the political and. Social media climate that we're in,、um, you know, where people are seeking equality and、mm-hmm. trying to recognize the achievements of, you know, marginalized groups, etc. I think that also plays a large part in a spotlight being put on women's football,、yeah. which is it, it's great timing too, because it seems like women's football, regardless of what's happening in the world,、mm-hmm. and regardless of how big a scope of、uh, international media has on women's football or not, regardless of that, it seems like women's football is in a good place. And it's great that all of a sudden attention is being put onto it at the right time. Yeah, yeah. And talking about about, about the tournament,、uh, China has produced the highest audience for a single match anywhere in the world. Over 50 million people in China watched their match against England.、Mm. And even though China lost the game, it was still a very intense match and really worth to watch. So yeah, I think like Brandon, you said, I think increased attention to the Women's World Cup. Is is a proof to the fact that women's participation in sports is getting increasingly valued and encouraged,、mm-hmm. and, which I think is very is a very positive sign for the whole sports sports industry. For sure, and I, yeah, and I hope to and see, just for young girls, you know, that、yeah. are wanting to potentially, you know, take sport as not necessarily as their career, but you know, they want to participate in sport. Yeah, I know, like in the past, like sport was seen as like a a, a thing for boys and girls, kind of did like whatever they do. But now those barriers are being broken down,、yeah. and when we see females succeeding in sports that are traditionally known as male sports,、yeah. I think that's only good for、um, the growth of women's sport and also just giving women the opportunity to participate in things ordinarily that in the past they weren't not necessarily not able to, but it wasn't a, a, a common occurrence.、Mm-hmm. And、yeah. now those barriers are being broken、yeah. down, and I think that's great. Yeah, and I hope to see more amazing matches of women's sports in years to come. Yeah, I'm sure we will. I'm sure、yeah. we will. I mean, you know, we've spoke we've spoken about some memorable mo- moments, and I think we will get into some memorable sporting,、um, you know, moments and achievements. Several teams achieved、uh, success globally. Um, several athletes、um, in China and around the world also achieved some pretty remarkable、um, 
records in 2023 and of course going into 2024 and the Paris Olympics there's still a lot to look forward to going into the new year Yang Guang looking back at the year were there any standout moments that you think wow I will remember this for some time and I'm so glad that I saw it yeah um I will follow up with um with women's world cup Mm -hmm. there's one picture um I really like about Spain's women's world cup triumph after the final and all the celebrations Spain's player, Selma Paraluelo, lied on the ground and took a selfie with her gold medal, <laughs> looking very peacefully. Um, it kind of... Touched- I think, but yeah, sorry, I think that's such a good representation of how a lot of athletes feel after winning. They don't feel like, wow, we won, this is amazing. <laughs> yeah. They're just like relieved, hmm. Be- especially when they... Well, yeah, t- to be so many... To be fair, Spain weren't yeah. considered the favourites. I think um, they were the underdogs going into that mm-hmm. match. But I think a lot of these teams that get to finals and win trophies, when they're expected to win, they don't feel like, oh, I'm so glad we won. This yeah. is an incredible achievement. Let's celebrate. They're just like, oh, my goodness, I'm so glad we didn't lose. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, it's, a um, weird, it's a weird phenomenon. Yeah, but um, that image really touched me because when the final whistle was blown, everyone on the Spain team ran to the pitch celebrating uh, like crazy. Yeah. I guess their minds were emptied at that moment. The only thing they knew was that they won. Yeah. What did it mean? Uh, how much effort had it taken only after the celebration party on the pitch when they realized that they were the world champions? Ronald, they, Ronaldo did something similar in 2008 when United won the Champions League where it was a penalty shootout and everyone ran towards um, <laughs> yeah, Edwin van der Sar for, sa- yeah, for, yeah, sa- for saving the penalty and Ronaldo just literally just passed out on his back and just started crying. <laughs> um, you know, so it, it's weird how these kind of celebrations affect different athletes differently. Yeah. I mean, in that particular instance, it was, it was quite fair to, for, for Ronaldo to feel relief because mm. he did miss a penalty. Um, but yeah, it's, it's kind of strange how in those euphoric moments, how differently different athletes react regardless of what they did on or off the pitch in a particular match yeah i guess only when they lie down on the pitch and let all things sink in and uh, then they knew what they truly managed to achieve after yeah. years of years of hard work and sometimes that realization doesn't even come on the day like sometimes it only happens when you're back at your home sitting on your couch like looking at a trophy or something like that mm. normally in those moments they, it, it still doesn't really sink in sometimes when when you achieve something like winning a world cup or winning a champions league medal or something because it probably just seems so surreal and crazy especially when you consider because as journalists i don't think we are aware sometimes of everything that a lot of these super famous super successful athletes have gone through to get to that point i mean you know so once we do our analysis we find out like you know what they've been through but you know, for for someone like Cristiano Ronaldo or, you know, some of the women in the Spain team, yes, they've achieved this incredible success. But, I mean, to get to that point, they probably sacrificed so much yeah. and went through so much disappointment injuries. and injuries and, yeah. you know, sacrificing time with friends and families and moving abroad and not getting into a team and then getting into a team. There's so much that they go yeah. through that we will never be aware of. And I think a lot of those emotions come out in those moments of relief and celebration and joy and it just must be a crazy mental experience. And yeah. they were not only representing themselves, they're representing a country. Yeah. Um, millions of people behind them. Yeah, um, here's, what, um, here's what coach um, Jorge Bilda said after that final. Extreme happiness. We have made many millions of people happy that have been watching us in Spain while we have been at the tournament. I feel very proud of my team, of my football players, not only those who have been here at the World Cup, but those who have participated during the whole of the qualification rounds and the training camps. Uh, well, in this image, um, Paraluelo looked ext- extremely calm, as I said. Um, you can neither tell the excitement on her face after the title nor the happy tears after a tough campaign. These seemed so many emotions at that moment that she just needed to be left alone to feel all of them. Uh, it really reminds me of a picture of Andre Iniesta sitting alone in the center of Camp Nou with all lights shut down after his final game with Barcelona. That's the feeling when you look back, what you went through before achieving something big. Yeah. Um, yeah. You face yourself again. You know more about yourself and acknowledge what you have done. I would say it's the best feeling a one athlete can feel um, in the sports world. Just beautiful. Yeah, one can only imagine what um, achieving something like that, you know, um, finishing a career at Barcelona or winning a, 
a World Cup medal must feel like. It must be absolutely incredible. Yeah. Tianyu, standout moments for you? Well, as uh, you, since you were talking about Ronaldo, as a mm. Cristiano Ronaldo fan, <laughs> it's really hard for me to admit that the most memorable sporting moment of 2023 would be watching Lionel Messi winning the Ballon d'Or for oh, a oh, record yeah. eighth time. Yeah, I mean, what I can I say about this? I mean, he deserves it this time, to be <laughs> yeah, fair. Yeah. But I mean, yeah. Yeah, after Messi won the World Cup, it seems like the debate over who is the goal in football has come to a yeah, conclusion. Yeah, it's finished, yeah. for sure. He has literally won everything he could. And as as a Ronaldo fan, I didn't feel jealous about Well, as a Ronaldo him. fan myself too, I mean, <laughs> I also had that, I said that the GOAT debate is over. Yeah. That being said, I mean, this man is what, 38, 39 years old. He's, yeah. He could potentially finish this year as the top scorer yeah. globally. Yeah. Who says he can't go on to win a World Cup the next time we, we have a World Cup? Yeah. He could be leading the line for Portugal at the age of 41, 42. You definitely, never know. Ooh. Definitely. <laughs> yeah, but, but we got show uh, respect for Messi. Yes, absolutely. He, he and Ronaldo have literally topped the football world for over a decade. And yeah, almost 20 years now. Yeah, and after Messi went to Miami and Ronaldo went to the Arab League, it would be nearly impossible for us to watch them compete in the top five Euro European leagues again. Well, that being said, we are going to see Inter Miami versus Al Nasser <laughs> next year. I think it's at the Riyadh Cup or something like that. Uh -huh. It's yeah, a preseason yeah. tournament. So we may see Ronaldo and Messi lock horns there and potentially going into another World Cup. You never know. Yeah, it would be thrilling. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and so I think Messi winning his eighth Ballon d'Or. Uh, that was great, yeah. Yeah, draws to an end to the contest between him and Ronaldo. For now. For yeah. now. <laughs> <laughs> and kind of marks the end of an era in football also yeah. i mean i think it marks the end of an era in european football yeah um but that being said i still think there's a lot to see from messi and ronaldo particularly ronaldo just because of not not having more talent than messi that i, I i've never believed that um, but because of how he's taking care of himself and just yeah. what an incredible athlete he, he has made himself to mm -hmm. be I think that we have not seen the last of Ronaldo. I yeah. think that he can still go on and achieve some pretty remarkable success, not necessarily with his club, Al Nassar, but I think that there's still more to come from Portugal and, sorry, from Ronaldo and potentially Messi um, for their national teams. Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll have to wait and see. For me, of course, South Africa winning their fourth Rugby mm, World course, Cup title. Yeah. That was absolutely incredible up against their old rivals, New Zealand, who, by the way, We've played in two World Cup finals and beaten them twice. And also, one of the World Cup trophies that New Zealand had was at a tournament where South Africa was not playing. So we have also now gone down as the greatest rugby team of all time. The first team to win four Rugby World Cup titles. And in the two finals where we faced New Zealand, we beat them twice. So take that, New Zealand. South Africa, number one, undisputed, undisputed undefeated. Pew, pew, pew. Boom, boom. Next. <laughs> I'm um, not arguing that one. Much. <laughs> Athlete of the year, Yang Guang. This is going to be... I mean, we could sit here for two hours talking about this because we've seen some remarkable performances from not just teams, but individuals um, across a variety of sports. Some of the names that stand out to me, Novak Djokovic in tennis, Ching Ha Yang in swimming. Um, those are probably some of the, the names that come to my mind at this point. Um, I hope I haven't stolen your thunder. Is there, who's who's on your Idiot. list? Oh no, who is it? Who is it? <laughs> of course, Djokovic. Yes, what a player! What a, what a man! What an athlete! Yeah. I mean, he's just yeah. remarkable. No doubt, it's Djokovic. Um, yeah. Let me put it this way: he was just two points away from winning all the Grand Slams of the year <laughs> at age of thirty-six. I can't name another athlete who is more brilliant than this man this year. And there are so many records he created this year and i won't go into details of those but um and competing against guys that are like 10 15 years younger than him yeah it's yeah. crazy but his mental toughness and his consistency have seemingly improved further in the latter stage of his career which makes sense i guess because if i just think about normal humans surely you know you become more confident in yourself and more mature and you know more mentally stable i guess as you get older so i guess i guess that makes sense but i mean the fact that he's able to develop that so much that he's his his athleticism becomes less important is mm. pretty pretty remarkable right yeah i uh, i mean he went through so many so much adversity and uh controversies in yeah. 2022 with vaccination issues yeah. and deportation incidents yet he came back not impacted at all by those and um, he selected fewer tournaments to play uh, for one or two months. He didn't even play a, an official match. How that might he... be the secret, though, because I think that a lot of the mistakes that I think Federer and Nadal made as they approached their latter years was that they were playing so much tennis, which I admire because, you know, you need to stay in shape and, you know, keep your head in the game, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. 
but maybe future athletes or future tennis players should take a leaf out of Djokovic's book because it seems like that rest that he got in between, you know, um, grand slams was uh, hugely beneficial. But how did he manage to keep consistent level throughout the That's year? That's a good question. Even more consistent than before. He must have a hell of a training partner. <laughs> <laughs> or he had some epic battles against the wall. <laughs> yeah, it must be a magical wall. Yeah. <laughs> it's just beyond me. Um, Djokovic sa said he's now equally motivated for 2024 and looked forward to a Golden Slam achievement next year. It is, you know, I'm still trying to push as, as, as long as I can and win Grand Slams and, you know, be a contender for top spot of the world and trying to make more history of the sport. That's, that's the drive, that's the motivation and I'm still feeling uh, very good in my own body. Um, you know, at this age playing one of the best seasons that I had in my career in 2023. So, you know, I'm going to keep going and see how far, how far it gets me. Honestly, yeah. I think he can do it. Uh, you know, even at the age of 37, just looking at the guys he's competing against, I would not be surprised that if, if he did it. I can, if he stays injury-free and keeps resting and, you know, stays on track, which I'm sure he will because he probably sees this as his, like, swan song year where he can achieve everything in his wildest dreams. Um, you know, I, I, I think he can do it. What do you think? Mm. I'm you, not really you... optimistic, even though I'm a <laughs> Djokovic fan. Yeah. yeah. Who do you think his biggest competitor will be? Alcaraz and a couple of the other boys. Alcaraz yeah. or... Or even some names we don't even yeah. know about at yeah. this time. I think the most interesting one to watch will be in Paris at the Olympics. I think that's mm. going to be a very interesting yeah. battle. You know, seeing some of the, the, the French favorites, um, seeing some of the younger guys. The Olympics always kind of throws a spanner in the works in, in the season. Yeah, so it'll be a interesting. Lot of, a lot yeah. of dark horses at yes. the Olympics. And, yeah. uh, so best of three games. Oh, okay. At the Olympics. So many odds at the court. Yeah. So yeah, anything can happen. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I think that's probably going to be the most interesting time to watch Djokovic next year. But I think yeah. that being said, he has to be an athlete that we all keep our eyes on throughout the entire year next year. Sure. And like you said, Yang Guang, a phenomenal 2023 and potentially an even better 2024. We'll have to wait and see. Tian Yu, who's your standout? <laughs> Uh, I might say Max Verstappen, Ugh. and the reason quite <laughs> Formula quite One's obvious. become so boring. Yeah, oh, it's like made, the Michael Schumacher days, dude. He's already made races at Formula One his own practice. Literally, sessions. yeah, set several new records in F1 this year, and I think it is one of the most dominant seasons by a, a driver in a sports history. And a car, to yeah. be fair, and a car, <laughs> a phenomenal car. I would say yeah. the biggest achievement of an athlete is to make the sports. Mm. boring exactly 100 <laughs> percent. tiger woods made it boring for a while michael schumacher made it boring for a while and now it seems like for Steppens in that yeah. conversation yeah. yeah yeah i mean it is frustrating for a, a neutral sports fan uh -huh. um but for the athlete himself i mean um wow he really deserves credit for mm -hmm. just dominating a sport that yeah. previously was dominated by Lewis Verstappen, but uh, Lewis Verstappen, <laughs> Lewis, Lewis Hamilton. Hamilton. That would be amazing, having uh, some com combining them and having Lewis Verstappen. It would be a monster. I mean, no, I've just, no, I've just said Lewis Verstappen. Yeah, Lewis Verstappen. I'm sorry, keep talking. <laughs> I'm confused. Anyway, it's the end of the year, guys. Give me a break. Give me anyway, a break. <laughs> Verstappen has won 19 of the 22 races in 2023. Oh, amazing. And that means 86% of the Grand Prix this year have been won by him which is the highest percentage of wings ever in yeah. the history of the sport. I think even in the Hamilton era, we never saw dominance yeah, like that. Yeah, and I don't think that the record will be broken in, in, in a long time. Yeah. Also, he went on a remarkable winning run this season from his comeback drive at the Miami Grand Prix, Prix in May mm -hmm. all the way to September's Italian Grand Prix by standing on the top of the podium 10 times consecutively. It was a bit emotional on the end lap. You know, it was a, the last time I was sitting in the car, which has, of course, given me a lot, so... Yeah, I'm of course very proud uh, to win here also here the last race. Um, but yeah, I have to say a big thank you to everyone at Red Bull. It's just been an incredible year. Um, it will be hard to do something similar again, but uh, we definitely uh, yeah enjoy this year. Yeah, that's I, really I th amazing. I think that's also going to be something interesting to watch in 2024 is to see if Verstappen can maintain that dominance. Yeah. But also, I would love to see Hamilton and Mercedes sort out whatever they're going yeah, through and and have a closer battle. Yeah, just give him some challenge between those two drivers. Yeah, and I would love to see. Um, I'm not particularly a Hamilton fan, but I would just love to see him break that record because I think. That incident in that last corner between Verstappen and Hamilton, I think it was in 2022. I'm still a little bit <laughs> on the fence about that. I think I think yeah. they did Hamilton dirty there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think 2024, that's also going to be a very interesting battle to watch. But that is all we have time for on this week's episode of Sideline Story. Thank you so much for joining us. And of course, we will be back next week with our latest topic and we'll see you then. 